you guys. So, and then we want to finish up with looking at uh, using, and, and this sometimes is in the beginning, especially when you're working with beginners, but for more for advanced balance and proprioception, you're going to get better results with putting it at the end. Number one, the body's already fatigued, and so the recruitment is going to be a lot higher. Number two, if you put it at the beginning, you're typically going to fatigue somebody out again before, if they, you, not that you can't do some balancing and activation work, right? But if we're really doing the advanced, you know, more difficult stuff, you're really going to blow out those motor units and decrease their, uh, or increase their recruitment during this phase, which is going to make it harder for them to recruit while they're doing their more functional sports specific type of stuff. Right, so saving this to the end is a lot better. You can also mix it in with your supersets and your circuits for more density, right? And ultimately back to that triphasic idea, adding isometrics and oscillations and unilaterals in and of itself provides that kind of different muscle stimulation versus plyometrics and regular resistance isotonic eccentric type of strength training. So adding these into your French contrast or your triphasic idea can be a way to do that with, with your supersets and your circuits. So, you, so it becomes a kind of a, an efficient thing that you can do as well. Right? Again, like I said, you don't necessarily want to do the advanced stuff before your advanced training. And uh, it's also as well something that you never want to take completely out of the programming. You know, most people have issues with balance. Also, balance, working on balance, like I said, doing the different things that you can with the density here, you know, and as well as like an injury prevention type of, of standpoint and ultimately a performance standpoint, you're going to continue to see improvements in somebody's posture and their ability to get in and out of the power position and their biomechanics by adding this stuff in. Is it going to directly improve somebody's strength? Not necessarily, right? But by adding more working it's specific with this, you're going to see improvements with strength and, you know, as well as looking at, like we've been talking about, kind of your volume in your training and periodization over the, over the long term, right? So then you got your cool down stretch, right? Which is basically cool down mobility, cool down stretch, and your, <clears throat> and your post-workout nutrition. This is another part that people typically skip. I think that uh, we see this on both ends in training and in uh, physical therapy that we don't do the best job with necessarily cooling somebody down and the ends that are going to give them you know, the, the benefit of the cool down. And we definitely in PT don't talk about the first post-workout nutrition. We were joking about it yesterday. A lot of times people go and get ice cream or something along those lines afterwards, right? I've had bunches of bunches of clients that have done that over the years. And, uh, you know, you're talking to them and you know, they eventually said, oh, yeah, I went to this ice cream place after. And I'm like, what are you doing? Why, why would you do that, right? It's, it's pretty sabotaging. You know, and even with the anabolic window type of stuff, you know, anytime that, uh, and I, I don't know the exact number on this, but I know that it's a fact, a certain number of uh, carbohydrates outside of the range uh, that, that you're looking for for improvement, which I'll, I'll go over in the nutrition section. I know I have it in there. Well, I want the response there from your training effect, right? So if you go and slam five pieces of pizza and a, you know, an ice cream cone after your workout, not only are you, uh, you know, adding all that extra, you know, negative part to your diet, it actually blunts the, the effect from your training, which is pretty interesting. <clears throat> you know, that nutrient timing concept, right, it, about the anabolic window afterwards, came from a lot of bodybuilding, right? Which also has a lot of uh, performance enhancing drug issues with it, right? So those guys have high insulin sensitivity and recovery capabilities after they do workouts anyways. But, you know, we, you know, we don't, if we're, if we're not on those types of drugs, we can't, you can't, you can't, you know, mimic what they're doing. So that's one of the things, you know, with bodybuilders typically, you know, and I don't want to say they don't work hard, right? But when you're on that type of stuff, you have to work hard, but you get away with a lot more room for error in your diet, which ultimately I think is the thing that's one of the most unhealthy things for them. You know, they typically lead this lifestyle that's unrealistic because see, their body's able to do something and recover, you know, and, uh, you know, get more out of the nutrition that they're doing or that they're using than their, their body naturally would, which again is, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's a shortcut and kind of a cheat code. that's not really uh, sustainable for people that aren't on those types of, uh, you know, drugs and supplements and whatnot. 
So that's pretty much what I have for, uh, you know, the uh, programming section for you guys. I know, Chris, you had said you wanted more of that. I know we're going to uh, get more into the exercise specific stuff and the assessment stuff here as we go. But I just I wanted to add this in today and go over this, hoping that it would be something that you guys thought was really beneficial in terms of the way that I think about working through this. Again, you know, starting out from here, these are the you know basic components of a training session. Right. So you start out with your your warm up, you know, how you're doing that with corrective exercise. This is a cardiovascular getting into your sports specific functional training type of stuff, your advanced, you know, strength training, getting into understanding like we were talking about using triphasics, you know, for that type of, uh, of training and then getting into your kind of post workout, you know, balance, muscle recruitment, you know, type of stuff and moving into your uh, recovery and cool down. Uh, uh, with your nutrition as well. So, and, and that's, and unless I missed something, I mean, that's the typical training session, right? And, and what you're going to see, and then adding in your reassessments as you go, right? Al along the way, 